In a previous video, I showed you how to use formulas to create a cut glass finish on a sphere. And if I do say so myself, a pretty nice shortcut to setting it up. Getting the scaffold sketches to the right radius was a matter of the right formula. But that got me thinking. It would be really nice to be able to apply the effect to other shapes that maybe don't have such a nice formula. Or where finding that formula might involve the stereotypical room full of chalkboards. It occurred to me that FreeCAD already knows how to do that without all the banging the forehead on the desk. For any shape you can sketch, you can drop a construction line from its axis out to the perimeter and create a reference constraint. Unfortunately, you can't stick that in a formula. So macros to the rescue. In FreeCAD, macros are just bits of Python code that get to run inside the program. They have access to the current document and the full library of FreeCAD functionality. Macros can really enhance your FreeCAD experience. Without macros, the design on the screen now could easily take the better part of an afternoon to put together. With macros, it can be done in just a couple minutes. I actually used three macros to create this design. I'll cover the first of those today. I'll do a follow-up video where I show you the other two macros and how to put it all together. If you haven't yet watched the previous video, you should click the reference and do so now. For the sake of time, I'll start with the revolve already designed. It's just the revolution of a simple profile made up of three arcs tied together with tangency. Then a vertical line closes the wire. If you want to design your own, I will caution you, you don't want the upper and lower arcs to be terribly concave, or your revolve won't intersect with the cutting tool at all and you'll have a broken geometry. I may cover that in a future video. But now we need a sketch to act as a radius finding function. But instead of three discrete arcs, it needs the curve to be one single object that can be the object of a point on object constraint. So select all three arcs and use the join curve tool from the curves workbench. Hide away all but the join curve for the next step. Create a new sketch on the XZ plane and bring in the join curve as external geometry. Now create a construction line constrained to the y-axis on one end and to the imported join curve at the other. Using the dimension tool, set a horizontal distance constraint on the construction line, but check the reference box so it just reads the value. Name that constraint capital Y. I chose that name since in standard nomenclature y equals f of x. You can see as I move the construction line up and down within the sketch, FreeCAD happily computes the needed length and tells it to us. It's always best to let FreeCAD do the work. Now create a constraint on the vertical distance of the construction line above the origin. This is to be a regular or driving constraint so it can determine the height we want the distance for. Name that constraint capital X. For the sake of demonstration, I'll set the line to be real geometry so we can see it in the model. Close the sketch. I'll bring back the revolve now. I've set the transparency to 50% so that we can see our line from the function sketch. Rename sketch 001 to func, F-U-N-C, short for function. With the function sketch selected, in the data pane, open up constraints and you can see we have the name constraints X and Y. Change the value of X and let it recompute and you can see that Y changes to the results of the function for that given X. Now to see it in action. Create a sketch on the XY plane. View cross section so we can see what we're doing. Create an octagon. This should look quite familiar from the previous video. Constrain one of the faces to horizontal and set a radius constraint on the construction circle. Name that constraint radius. For illustration purposes, I'm going to set the construction circle to real geometry so we can see it better. Close the sketch. 
I've gone ahead and made duplicates of that sketch and set their Z position at 10 millimeter intervals. To keep the model tree from getting out of hand, select all of the sketches and put them into a compound. Now select the function sketch and the compound and run the set diameter macro. FreeCAD thinks this over for a minute and voila, all of the diameters are correctly set. You've seen the magic happen. Now let's pull back the curtain and see what that set diameters macro is actually doing. It might be a little hard to read in the video, so I've copied it into the description. Alternatively, go to the GitHub link in the description and view it there or on another screen, or download it into your FreeCAD macro directory. If you need help finding your macro directory, see the instructions in my Path Helix video at 6 minutes and 20 seconds. Go to Macro Macros. Select Set Diameters and click Edit. As you can see, it's not long and complicated. Let's go through it step by step. The first line of code, line 19 in the file, s equals freecad GUI dot selection dot get complete selection. FreeCAD GUI is just one of the modules that's automatically made available to your macro. It maintains a list of whatever you have selected. This function just returns that list of selection objects. The list is maintained in order, so the first thing selected before calling the macro was the function sketch. So set a variable for the function sketch to the first item in the list, S sub 0. We specifically want object, which is just one of the properties of the selection object. That's the same object you would get in the Python console by right-clicking the sketch and selecting Send to Python Console. Next, capture all of the subsequent objects that were selected. In this case, it would be just compound. I did that with a list comprehension to get the object property of each selection object in the list from index 1 to the end of the list. Now define a function that is kind of the key to the whole thing. DoFunc, which accepts a single parameter x. Get datum and set datum can be used to read and set the values of name constraints in any sketch. So set datum for the constraint named x to the parameter value x. Recall that x is the name of the vertical distance constraint that sets the height of our construction line. Then tell the sketch to recompute. Finally, get the value of datum y and return it y being the horizontal length of the construction line that defines the results of the sketch. Next we find a couple of filter functions. These are just functions that iteratively process a list. I've written them in the form of generator functions. Expand compounds iterates through the input list li. When it finds an element whose type ID is part colon colon compound, it recursively calls itself with that element's out list, which in the case of compounds is a list of all of the objects that make up the compound. It yields each of those elements in turn. For any other kind of element, it simply yields the object and moves on. Next, we have filter, which accepts the additional parameter name. Filter examines each element and tries to get datum for the name provided. Things that are not sketches will throw an exception because they don't have a get data method. Sketches that do not have a constraint with the given name will throw an exception as well. Since this is within a try except block, those exceptions simply cause it to pass on the item and go on to the next. If no exception is thrown, it yields the object. Finally, to the driver of the macro, we expand compounds on targets. Filter the result looking for sketches with a radius constraint, and iterate on the result. Using expand compound here is why it works to just select a compound containing all of the sketches. I've got a print here just for debugging. For each of the target sketches, set datum radius based on the results of dofunc with the sketches placement.base.z as the parameter. Then tell the sketch to recompute. 
Like all Python programs, when it falls off the end, it terminates. In this case, we turn in control to FreeCAD. Macros in FreeCAD are powerful tools that can greatly simplify your workflows. FreeCAD itself is in the form of object-oriented Python, although parts of it are implemented in C. Anything that is in C will tend to have a Python wrapper available to your macro to call. The macro really is a first-class object. I'm not aware of any sort of cohesive reference or tutorial for the entire API of FreeCAD, but there are a few tools available to help you discover what you need. The first is the Python console within FreeCAD itself. I discovered a lot of what I needed to know by either performing an operation and looking at the commented Python code emitted to the console, or by right-clicking on objects in the model and selecting Send to Console where I could directly examine the relevant object. If I right-click on the function sketch, Send to Python Console, this assigns the variable obj for the sketch. So if I just type obj and dot, I get a nice little list of properties and methods that I might want to access. If I hover over one of those items in the list, I get a brief description of that property or method. For example, get datum. Beyond that, a few good web searches did reveal helpful pages and explanatory posts in the FreeCAD forum. There's a lot there, and like most things in the world of programming, there's always more to learn. But you don't have to know everything at once in order to do useful things. That's probably enough to absorb for one video, so in the upcoming part two, I'll show you a couple more macros and how those can be used to quickly and easily set up the cut glass effect on a wide variety of nearly arbitrary shapes. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.